So we're gonna start this out with uh, how great this game was. It was actually pretty good. You know, I first heard of this as it being, you know, the replacement to Fallout New Vegas. Like, this was going to be the game, you know, that we, re like, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm a big Fallout New Vegas fan. And I have at least played that at least seven times through. Like, you know, like fully to completion or whatever. And I, I know that's a low number to some of you all out there. But I'm proud of that number, okay? The number's fine in my books. Because usually... I, if, if you're lucky, I'll play through the game once. I'll give you one good playthrough. One time. And that's that's pretty much it. If uh, if I play it once, it was good enough for me to complete it. But most of the time, I play like a quarter or half of it and then stop. A good example of this would be Valhalla. I did not play Valhalla to completion. I got like I don't know, a quarter, not even half. I, I I can I can tell you now that I didn't make it halfway through Valhalla, and I loved the game when it first came out. But it seemed just like the same thing over and over again. And there's, you know, I don't know. There, there, there is something that comes with gaming and, and the same thing that you see a lot of it now. And some games can do it really well where you do the same thing but it's a little bit different so it makes it feel different. Honestly, this game didn't make me feel like it was the same other than the weapons. The weapons in this game were lackluster. They were the same, just different variants, doing a little bit more damage. And I liked that you could customize and 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 do all the, the modifications and everything and tinker with it with actual money, but... When it comes down to it, what? It's the same flamethrower. Guess what? I played with companions, and my companions still stuck with flamethrowers because for some reason those were the best thing for them to have. I'd give them awesome assault rifles, you know, light machine guns, heavy machine guns, pistols. Now, the, the thing that did the most work where they weren't absolutely worthless and just like a diversionary target because in the beginning of this game it's pretty hard and right now there are some spoilers that are happening the the, the gameplay footage that you're seeing is the final the final this is the final area this is the end of the game my choices will be added up here at the end of it and I'm pretty happy with those choices I wanted to share it all with you so that you could see what, you know, my choices have made, I guess, in this game. Because I, I just played it, just fun. And uh, the second part to this review is I also exclusively played this title through cloud gaming that's provided through Xbox. I played this on an S20 Ultra. I have a 21 Ultra that's like my actual personal phone, but I have a 20 Ultra that I just use for emulation, um, face cam sometimes. If you guys are, you know, familiar with my channel and you, you're a reoccurring or subscribe person, then you know that my whole channel and everything is ran through my phone, through my phones, but through a phone, editing, recording, all of it. And so being able to do this and trying to compete with, you know, people on YouTube that actually have setups that are not phones was really cool to play this game. And I know, all right, all right, hold on, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm getting ahead of myself. This game was great. I would not call it a replacement for New Vegas. You could pick up New Vegas right now and want to play it at least two or three times through 
different weapons, different play styles, different choices, different missions, or learning about secret missions. There's just so much content there. And I played this game, I looked for extra things. Like, I went out of my way to try to diplomat my way and, and talk to people, except for the first area. I, just, I totally just, you know, screwed over Edgewater. <laughs> Edgewater died at my hand, and I, I'm, I'm okay with that option. But, all in all, the only time I wanted to replay this game again after I completed it was to see if I could make a difference between Edgewater to where they didn't die and reach a diplomatic solution between Edgewater and the Botanical Lab. That's it. It was story-driven things that, you know, Fallout New Vegas had, but it was different in the same turn of hand that I also wanted to play Fallout New Vegas because I wanted to be an unarmed person, or I wanted to play it as a melee person, or I wanted to do it with explosives or guns, whatever. There are so many just different aspects of play that game that are broken once you you know understand the game and play it that make it really fun this it wasn't like oh well, this time i'm gonna go over and smash everybody with the powerful hammer or the plasma cutter no i would stick with guns a hundred percent on this and just replay it for the story choices only which congratulations you definitely made it in the books and the realm of replay ability in my mind because i usually don't replay a game or even complete a game but here i am you know justifying another playthrough just seeing how my story actions could have played out differently and that's cool you guys did a good job. I had no problems with the game. And you guys can see it for yourself. There, like, this is the cloud gaming footage that you're seeing right here on screen. The only thing is, is when it takes me so long to answer the questions, I was also taking care of, like, two out of four of the kids that I have. Which, I will get into why cloud gaming is so good for somebody like me. But... So the only thing that was wrong with the game is everyone... Yeah, uh, uh, there was nothing wrong with the game. Game is good. Game is good. If you haven't played Outer Worlds, play Outer Worlds. And that's where the Outer Worlds review ends is... It is definitely not a Fallout New Vegas replacement. It came close. But you ain't taking that torch. That torch is still just held, held in the hands of New Vegas. One of the best games, in my opinion, that are made. So, going on to the second part of this review is cloud gaming. Stadia, as of the time of me recording this, just released a statement saying that they're shutting down Stadia. And they're going to shut it down at a later date, like completely. They're going to let it bleed out for a couple of months, but it's done. I... If, if you're familiar with my channel, if you're not, I tried to get Stadia, but there were so many customer issues with even getting Stadia, even though that I, 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 I pre-ordered it, and I tried to be at the cusp of, you know, trying to do cloud gaming, because Stadia at that time was the only person that was going to release major league titles that you could stream over a cell phone, which would be great for me in my situation because I do have an Xbox One. I've been trying to get... I, I can get a Series S, but I don't want a Series S. I want the X, and so as soon as I can get an X, I will get an X. But until that point, I'm still rocking the One. And the One, I'm rocking a One X, and that baby is nice. I love it. Have no problems. If you're team PlayStation, good for you too. I'm, I'm not that person in the, uh, the console wars. You know, just pick your side, but I definitely think that <laughs> Xbox takes the cake. Anyway, cloud gaming. It does have some weird, like for me, the latency 
happens rarely like where my button input lags that isn't the major thing that happens with me when I'm playing the major thing that happens with me is the graphics won't look so good and it'll do this weird like buffering where like it looks like I'm looking at like a 480 fucking YouTube video and then all of a sudden it tightens up and like this line will go down the screen and it will sharpen back up to like HD right and every once in a while the internet will drop and it will be like trying to connect you'll see it in this video it definitely happens when when uh later in this but as far as you guys see like this this is this is the experience and it was great for me like for people to say that cloud gaming um is dead don't believe that stadia died because they didn't have the money and they left it to die they announced it for a month and that was the only thing that was heard or said anything about it they didn't put anything into marketing or doing anything with it and that's why it died so stevia died because of lack of advertisement in my opinion i think mudahar put it perfectly i'm sure you all have seen that video if you're you know even somewhat savvy and and what's going on in, in tech wise i guess but no they didn't do anything with advertising they didn't I, I don't know it was it was it was something that was put off to the side for sure and now being like i've been a beta tester from the first time that microsoft i, I applied to be a beta tester for Microsoft to do cloud gaming and all that and I love it I you know my Xbox is connected to the TV that my family watch I got four kids okay four kids and a wife that works full-time I'm the stay I'm the stay-at-home mom this dude is the stay-at-home mom she works she makes a lot of money she, that's what she wants to do that's what she likes to do i like taking care of the kids and when i have a few moments to game here or there it's generally on my phone i don't have i don't i don't have the option or the capability of other than losing sleep at night to go in and use the 75 inch tv that i have for gaming or even the 43 inch for gaming because i got kids that i gotta watch and take care of and i'm losing sleep if i'm if, if i'm gaming on that behemoth of a tv or even the one in the bedroom it it just doesn't work it does over here and there and that's why i have those tvs is because it does work here and there but not for content not for the things that I would like to accomplish with my channel. So with cloud gaming, it really opens up the avenue to where now I can emulate, you know, original Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, Dreamcast, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Nintendo 3DS, can't do the Switch, can't do the Wii, but I can do PSP, PS1, PS2, you know, and now Xbox 360, Xbox One. It has opened up the avenues for growth by 100, 100 fold because you can make a channel that is playing old games and you might make it. But if you're not already established, then you're not your your, your growth is going to be next to none. And that's just because the generation's moving on. I I mean, I'm old. You know? Nobody nobody played the original Crash Bandicoot that is watching YouTube now. And the people who do find my channel. That's great. But majority of the time <laughs> It's, you know, the new the new stuff that people are watching, the new stuff that gives the growth. So I'm happy for the option of being able to do that. And with cloud gaming, it definitely opens up those avenues to where I'm not 
struggling for growth as a channel. And those are my thoughts on cloud gaming. Cloud gaming died today, not died today, but cloud gaming for Google died today with their announcement. And it's just because they, I guess, didn't want to advertise or keep putting money into it. But as far as, I don't know the uh, PlayStation aspects of, of cloud gaming, but I know that Microsoft is a big enough company to keep piling money on top of a, you know, a burning building until that building is, you know, smothered by money and not burning anymore. So hats off to Microsoft for pulling through and keeping it going because it's working for me. And if it just gets more ironed out like technology tends to do, then I am going to be one happy camper here in like one to five years when it's all ironed out and running like a smooth ship. So, cloud gaming didn't die. If you want the cloud game, pay for the Xbox Ultimate membership. And if you have a somewhat decent phone or an iPad, get down on some games, baby. They have so many titles that are offered there that you can just stream. Like I said, I got the Xbox One. But this, this game was never even downloaded to my Xbox. This was just something I played exclusively through my fucking S20. Didn't download it. Just played it on the moments that I had to play it. And so I felt it was really important to get this out when all this stuff is going on. So without further ado, the remainder of this video will be... You know, this final fight, and then the choices and everything being wrapped up in one smooth package. I hope you enjoyed. And if you want to hear, you know, some more rants by me, you know, subscribe. Everything I do is for my phone. Thank you all. Get me out of here! How glad I am to see you. You did the right thing. Akande was a monster. Her death was much deserved and long overdue. And you, you lunatic, you broke into the board's own fortress just to rescue one doddering old man. You are absolutely out of your mind, and I can't begin to thank you enough. I'm all right, thanks to you. Akande wanted my cooperation. I'm quite sure she would have beaten it out of me if you hadn't arrived. You've broken the board's stranglehold on this colony, and you saved my life. But there's still so much we have yet to accomplish. You and I are going to have to work harder than ever to save Halcyon. I'm afraid the situation is far worse than any of us ever anticipated. I would like nothing more than to celebrate this victory, but we have a serious problem on our hands. Earth has gone dark. 
We haven't received a single message in three years. There's been no communication, no signals, nothing. Two years ago, the Earth's Directorate's frigate disappeared on their way back to Earth. We don't know what they discovered when they arrived, or if they arrived at all. Hold on, Doc. Are you telling me the Earth went dark three years ago, and the board's just been covering this up? They've been incredibly effective at concealing the truth. Right now, the only people in the colony who know are standing in this room. You mean... we're all alone out here? Really alone? I'm afraid so, Miss Holcomb. Halcyon is the only home we have left. Returning to Earth is no longer an option. We're in serious trouble, my friend. Do you know what this means for Halcyon? We can't rely on Earth for support anymore. We've been cut loose. We're entirely on our own. Yes, we do. You've done a marvelous thing. You've succeeded where anyone else would have failed, including me. We must begin the revival process immediately, starting with the hope's brightest minds. And then we're going to fix this damn colony, one problem at a time. We're going to need a leader, and I can't imagine a better person for the job than you. What do you say, old friend? Will you help us? You won't hear a word of disagreement from me. You're the best thing to ever happen to Halcyon. If you want to take it upon yourself to lead this colony, you have my support. We're not a colony any longer, are we? Our last connection to Earth has been severed, and so we have been set free. Our future is uncertain, and no one knows what tomorrow holds. Exciting, isn't it? The OSI teaches that everything in the universe happens according to the grand plan. But the stranger that arrived in Halcyon was an unplanned variable. From the moment he landed in Emerald Vale, his actions altered the course of history. The events on Tartarus brought about the end of the board's authority. But the board's mistakes would haunt the colony for decades to come. The damage they left behind would require the work of a generation to repair. Dr. Phineas Wells began reviving a handful of the Hope's colonists, engineers, scientists, technicians, and intellectuals. They were among the brightest minds the Earth had ever sent out into the stars. The Hope's scientists and engineers woke up in a colony descending headlong into total collapse. With no way to return to Earth, they had no choice but to band together and devote themselves to the cause of saving Halcyon. The people of Halcyon were nothing if not hardy. In the absence of the board's authority, many of the colony's settlements banded together with a single purpose in mind, survival. Life was especially hard in the years to come. Some towns dissolved by attrition and starvation, but most of them found a way to carry on. In the years to come, Halcyon was forced to reckon with its newfound freedom. The board was gone, and for better or worse, the colony was responsible for its own destiny. Between MSI's worker-centric policies and the iconoclast manpower, Sanjar and Zora were able to rally many of the Terra Two townships to their cause. MSI's workforce swelled, and the iconoclast enjoyed a significant surge in their ranks. The board was too distracted by infighting and internal politics to stop MSI from becoming a powerful corporation and a refuge for townships that might have fallen through the cracks. Consumed by paranoia, Lilia Hagen took Sublight Salvage in a controversial direction, openly accusing board officials of an extraterrestrial conspiracy. One day, an accident at the Groundbreakers docking bay silenced her forever. Time would tell if her replacement could keep the Sublight family together. 
The collapse of Edgewater left its workers bereft of any purpose in life. Most of them made their way to Adelaide McDevitt's camp, hoping to ingratiate themselves into her favor. Adelaide accepted only a few to her community. The rest were turned away and likely died of starvation. Nevertheless, Adelaide's camp grew into a well-established town. Adelaide McDevitt refused to cooperate with the ongoing effort to save Halcyon from collapse. A sympathetic deserter stole a copy of her research and delivered it to the Hope's scientists. It is unclear how useful Adelaide's research was. An optimistic estimate suggests her work may have bought Halcyon another few years. Adelaide would never know. She died that winter. June Lee Tennyson fought to protect the Groundbreaker's independence. While the board's influence faded, mechanical difficulties forced her to rely on parts that only corporations could provide. The cost was high, and time would tell if June Lee could balance the work with her aspirations for a better future. The rediscovery of the hope and the abandonment of the Lifetime Employment Program forced Byzantium to come to terms with some uncomfortable realities about the state of Halcyon. While Byzantines were reluctant to surrender the luxuries they'd grown accustomed to, the board's diminished authority gave them little choice in the matter. Nearly everyone had to learn to make do with less. Some even had to get jobs. It was a dark time indeed. Life in Halcyon was sobering for Felix Millstone. The grand revolution he dreamed of never came. There was no great awakening for the colony, no celebrations in the streets. There was only the hard, desperate work of trying to repair a broken colony. Felix never had a head for numbers, but if there was labor to be done, he was there to help. Eventually, Felix realized that the work of a revolution was done with two hands. Once the matter with the Hope colonists was resolved, June Lay bashfully asked Parvati if she'd like to join her permanently on the Groundbreaker. And Parvati enthusiastically, if somewhat awkwardly, agreed. The stories of her adventures spread across the colony, and Parvati soon found herself the center of attention. Having served as the engineer of a renowned spacecraft, Tramp freighters and wildcat miners sought her out by name. And in no time, she was a fixture in the Groundbreaker's mechanical ecosystem. She and Jun Lei were never far apart. Nioka returned to Monarch to take another crack at making a permanent life for herself. She formed the Caron Group, a mercenary outfit of ragtag survivalists and wilderness experts. Anyone in need of a guide or just looking to throw back a beer and swap stories could find her camping on the trail or clearing an infestation. Before his untimely death, Captain Alex Hawthorne had plans to restore and modify for combat purposes a sanitation and maintenance auto mechanical that he'd found in a state of disrepair in Emerald Vale's scrapyard. That unit remains broken down and forgotten in the unreliable supply closet to this day. Minister Clark was released from house arrest and his contact with you gave him a sense of renewed purpose and vigor. Once it became clear that no help would be coming from Earth, he threw his considerable efforts and talents into helping Halcyon manage the crisis before it. As for Dr. Phineas Wells, he spent his remaining years in his orbital lab. He eventually came to terms with his own past and was able to forgive the mistakes of his younger self by devoting his remaining years to serving the colony. Dr. Wells was able to revive many more scientists and engineers than he first expected, thanks to the additional batch of chemicals you stole from the ministry. Wells never forgot about the human lives that were lost in acquiring these chemicals. In the end, Dr. Wells was able to save every scientist and engineer aboard the Hope. Over the next decade, nearly all of the Hope's remaining colonists were successfully revived. Halcyon saw a period of rapid technological and scientific advancement. 
Breakthroughs in dietary supplements saved the colony from starvation. Geoengineering projects and social reforms began to change the structure and character of the colony. Dr. Wells laid the groundwork for the project to save the colony, but he would never live to see the fruits of his labor. He passed away a few years later. His work was carried on by the scientists and engineers he revived. Today, Halcyon has stabilized. The people of the colony work hard to adapt to their new circumstances. Nearby colonies send aid and supplies. Life will never be easy in Halcyon, but for the first time in its history, there exists a sense of real, genuine hope about the future. And what about you, the unplanned variable in the history of Halcyon? You brought an end to the chaos on Tartarus and proved yourself the most capable leader left in the colony. You administered the colony in your own image. With the old power of the board destroyed, a new government of Halcyon rose with you at its center. With your steady hand, you guided Halcyon through the turbulent years that were to follow and helped ensure the survival of the colony until the end of your days. No one knows what's happened to Earth, and no one knows what the future has in store for Halcyon. All we know for certain is this. The name of the unreliable and that of its intrepid captain will remain the subject of countless stories for years to come.